so today we're going to learn about three different types of sentences. This first one is called a simple sentence. So a simple sentence is when you have an independent clause and it contains a subject and a verb and expresses a complete thought. So like the question earlier when I asked, uh, what is your favorite type of food? So you could say, you know, my favorite type of food is Mexican food, or my favorite type of food is um, Chinese food, or um, my favorite one more. My favorite type of food you could even say um, is spaghetti. That's fine. Be very specific, but that is an independent clause. So you're you're just saying that there aren't any commas, and you're not adding any more detail. So, for example, here you have some students like to study in the mornings. So the subject, which we need to have, is students. So who likes to study in the mornings? The students do. And the verb, which is an action word, this is going to be like. The students like to study in the mornings. And it expresses a complete thought, so there's nothing else to it. It's just some students like to study in the mornings, and that's it. So this is the simplest type of sentence. And uh, we will be practicing all types of sentences so that you can get from simple to compound to complex, which is what we'll be learning next. So on your paper, feel free to take notes as we're going along, but I will go over this again afterwards. So if you don't get all of it, that's all right. Okay, so this next sentence is a little is a little bit more complex. So this is called a compound sentence. This compound sentence is interesting. Um, it contains two independent clauses. Now, I was always confused. What is an independent clause, and what it? Why do you have two independent clauses in one sentence? So basically. An independent clause is when you have a sentence that is a complete thought. But instead of saying, for example, look at number or at A, um, I try to speak Spanish, period, and then saying, my friend tried to speak English, it's easier if you just say, I tried to speak Spanish, comma, and my friend tried to speak English. Because if we don't have um, these coordinators, which coordinators are words like for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so, in this sentence, then it's, you can't really combine them, right? So these are the combining words. It makes two sentences that are two separate thoughts, um, one sentence. So when you're reading, the reason this is important is when you're reading something and there are all of these periods everywhere, so you had a lot of just simple sentences, it's not going to flow as well, so you're constantly having to stop. It would kind of like, it'd be like if you were at a, in your, a car with your parents and every single street had a stop sign. Think of those stop signs as periods, like you're reading a book. And so you have to drive and then stop, and then drive and then stop, and then drive and then stop. Well, nobody wants to do that, right? So you have to have some continuous movement. Otherwise, you're going to stop paying attention to what you're reading. So this is why writers have these compound sentences, to make it smoother. Uh, one of my favorite things that I tell all of my students is to use fanboys. Fanboys is this acronym right here so that an acronym is when each letter so the F A N B O Y S stands for something else so for example F stands for for A is and N is nor B is but O is or Y is yet and S is so these are connector words so when you have compound sentences Say you have two simple sentences and you want to make it into a compound sentence, you have to use one of those. And you always have to put a comma before you put it in. So let's look at B. Marco played football. So that's one sentence. And then the other one is Maria went shopping. This is saying Marco played football, comma, so Maria went shopping. 
So it's because Marco was playing football, Maria went shopping. They might have hung out together as friends, but because Marco was busy, Maria went and did something else. So instead of saying, Marco played football, Maria went shopping, it makes more sense to say, Marco played football, so Maria went shopping. It's easier to read that way. The last one, Julie drew a picture, but she did not color it. You could just say, Julie drew a picture, period, and then you could say, she did not color it, but instead of it here, if this was going to be a separate sentence, you would have to say picture, but or you would say, she did not color the picture. So Julie drew a picture, she did not color the picture. So it takes away having to repeat yourself more than once. So you could just say, Julie drew a picture, but she did not color it. And again, the connecting word here is but. So remember, fanboys. Okay, lastly, you have a complex sentence. So a complex sentence has an independent clause and a dependent clause. That means that if you were to write part of the sentence by itself, it would be an incomplete sentence, while the other one is a complete sentence. So an incomplete sentence is a sentence where you don't have a complete thought. So if you look at the first one, when he handed in his homework, and then the second one is he forgot to give the teacher the last page. So which one of these is the independent clause and which one is the dependent clause? Remember, the dependent clause is the incomplete one. Could I say to you, when he handed in his homework and nothing else? It doesn't really make sense to say that. So I'm missing something, which lets me know immediately that this is the dependent clause. So what I usually do is write a D so that I know, and it follows by the comma right there. And then the next part of the sentence is, he forgot to give the teacher the last page. You could easily say that as a sentence. He forgot to give the teacher the last page. But you're saying when he handed in his homework, he forgot to give the teacher the last page. So you're adding more information. And then again, these types of sentences have something called a subordinator. So, for example, you could use because, since, after, although, or when. Um, or they have a relative pronoun such as that, or who, or which. This one, they used when. So, he forgot to give the teacher his homework, or the last page of his homework, when, um, when he handed it in. Okay. So B, the teacher returned the homework after she noticed the error. So which part of this sentence is going to be the dependent clause and which one is the independent clause? So let's look for the dependent clause first. That's the one that is an incomplete thought. So is it the teacher returned the homework? Could you just say that? So could I just say the teacher returned the homework and that's it? Yes, I think I can because I have my subject here so the teacher, and then I have my verb, so I could just say the teacher returned the homework, period, and that would be okay. But you need to have, since you have more information, you have that other part of the sentence that is going to be an incomplete thought. So I can't just say, after she noticed the error. That doesn't make any sense. You'd be looking at me like, what about after she noticed the error? Um, so that is going to be this part is going to be the dependent clause. So without, and so here's the independent, here's the dependent. Basically, without this first part of the sentence, this one could not exist. So this sentence right here, after she noticed the error, this part of the sentence could not be if we did not have the teacher return the homework. It'd be an incomplete sentence. Lastly, the students are studying because they have a test tomorrow. So our keyword here is because, right? Um, so that's the connecting word. So that means that on either side, we are going to have either the dependent clause or the independent clause. Let's find out which one. So the students are studying. Is that a complete sentence? 
and then you have they have a test tomorrow. So which one is dependent and which one is independent? So you could say the students are studying, period, and that would be okay. So I think this is the dependent one. And but if you were to say they have a test tomorrow, that wouldn't or because they have a test tomorrow, that doesn't tell you what they are doing because they have a test. Um, tomorrow. So you don't know that they are studying because they have a test. I hope that makes sense. If not, we'll go over it again and then um, we'll get better at once we practice.